it's fourteen hundred now, right? Uh, yes. But but here in Tokyo, it's actually twenty one hundred. Yeah, nine p.m. It's really good for me. <laughs> so uh, let's get started. Thank you so much for coming to my session. I'm really happy to be here. And if you don't mind, please turn your camera on. I'd like to see your faces. Only if you don't mind. Hi. <laughs> uh, the session title, uh, Let's Automate Renewing Free SSL Certificates on Your FileMaker Server. So, my name is Koji Takeuchi from Tokyo, Japan. I'm doing develop uh, training about FileMaker and blah, 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 blah. And when I'm not writing scripts, I play guitar and vocals at the band. So I look at the Rickenbacker style strap of my guitars. It's pretty, pretty much rock and roll, right? <laughs> In Japan, we pronounce FileMaker like FileMaker and spell it like F A I L Maker. Fail Maker. Yeah. It uh, definitely describes me. And my apologies. Some people think I'm good at speaking English, but I'm really sorry. It's a common misunderstanding. I'm really sorry. Uh, I'm only good at faking English or pretending a good English speaker, unfortunately. So during my session, uh, sometimes hard to understand what I say uh, because of my bad accent. Please just leave it, ignore it. Maybe it's not a big deal. <clears throat> so, uh, Here's the agenda. What is, let's encrypt and get the certificate and put the certificate. How to automate the process and run it periodically. So this session is not about FileMaker Pro and not really about FileMaker Server as well. This session is about SSL certificates and pretty much about install something. Not much about defined configurations uh, because it doesn't really need it. So let's see how to make it. First of all, let's encrypt is not my words. It's the name of the service we are about to try. It's a certification authority by Internet Security Research Group. And it's free, totally free, completely free. It provides uh, domain validation certificates only because it doesn't need any real world interaction. And that's why we can make it fully automatic, but still supports to put the multiple domains in one certificate and also supports wildcard certificates for free. Cool, isn't it? But the certificate expires in 90 days. Normal certificates like uh, VeriSign or GeoTrust brings us at least one year term, but let's increase it's only 90 days. We have to renew it in short terms. But 
it's no longer the problem if we can renew it automatically and in every two, three months. So how it works on Let's Encrypt. We send challenge requests to Let's Encrypt server and then challenge access from Let's Encrypt server to verify we are valid owner of the domain. And if we send valid answer to them, Let's Encrypt server send us the certificates. Done. It is not much complicated, isn't it? But, <laughs> and uh, we have to two options of the way to challenge uh, using HTTP or uh, DNS. HTTP is easier, but uh, the host must be reached from the internet. The host means the uh, host which has the exact same FTDN, uh, which about to getting certificate. <coughs> the host we are about to get certificate must be on the internet and must be reached via internet. And sometimes we can't use HTTP method to getting certificates. Uh, for FileMaker server, because we don't always run HTTP server on FileMaker server host. And we don't always run FileMaker server on the internet. This time, I will show you some demos by DNS challenge. So, DNS is, uh, I wrote a little complex, but uh, how complicated it is? It's not really. If your DNS service provider supports API access to automate, and as long as we use the right tool, and uh, we don't develop everything for challenge access or downloading certificates. There are number of tools out there and already developed by someone. For example, CertBot. I believe CertBot is the most popular in these days. Well, it's been most popular from start but I've been using the other one. I've been using dehydrated instead of uh, CertBot because a few years ago, CertBot didn't look cool for me. Like uh, it forced me to update Python on my host and didn't support DNS challenge at that time. But now, I believe the third bot is the first choice for most of the people who need to use less encrypt. We can find lots of plugins for common DNS services. Uh, I can click it. And uh, yes, Cloudflare, uh, Google, uh, Route 53, uh, and some plugins provided by ThreadBot uh, Official, and some others by third parties. We have a lot of choices. And about dehydrated, we can find. Uh, but also, we can find similar tools called DNS hook script for dehydrated. There's a list of bunch of DNS challenges, <coughs> uh, DNS services, and pretty much similar to third part. So we can use these tools and getting uh, certificates without any coding, 
by ourselves. So I'm going to show two demos. Of course, we don't have to write the process. We only define where, which like host name or uh, which DNS provider, uh, this is my API key, uh, something like that. The rest of all, CertBot or Dehydrated and their plugin or hook script will do everything for us. Okay, uh, let me do some demos. Uh, from now, this session would be like a live coding. Uh, no, actually not coding, more like live installing or live setting something up. I know it will be uh, kind of like boring, but I believe you guys will be able to see uh, the, this video later and you can check something when you're stuck on your server. I hope this will help someone. So let's start at in installing FileMaker Server. It's quick. So we need to install a few things before installing FileMaker server. Uh, unzip and uh, for zipping FileMaker server installer and uh, send OS release something is needed by FileMaker server. In send OS, we use yum to install something. And sudo means running administrator privilege temporarily. Okay, and uh, one more. Uh, I copy and paste from there. And uh, so, unzip FileMaker Server installer uh, to the new folder named FMS. 19. Uh, extracting. Okay. By the way, how many people are familiar with the command line interface? So please, uh, okay, Egbert, or some people, okay, and some people are not. Okay, uh, maybe it doesn't seem very easy to learn, uh, isn't it? Or feels not intuitive to use, but not really. It's a kind of obedient, like, calculations in FileMaker. So when I say, uh, when I type ls, it returns a list of the folder contents. ls-f, it shows some batches uh, to indicate it's a folder or regular file or executable or kind of like that. ls-l returns long versions of the same list. And ls-lh returns long and human readable file size description. Oh, it's easy, isn't it? <laughs> if you don't do a typo, then it's completely easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the point, Egbert. 
But we still need to be careful uh, of typing. Sometimes it's too honest to be a fault. When I type SL instead of LS, oh my God, such a disaster struck us. <laughs> SL dash uh, F way up to the sky. Much horrible. <clears throat> oh. Is that good? <laughs> Did you like it? <laughs> okay. Uh, really? Yeah. So let's install FileMaker server. Uh, change directory to FMS19 and uh, copy and paste it. So blah, 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 blah. Boring? No, no, it's quick. You can wait this. And uh, of course, you don't have to read this and you don't have to memo this. A license agreement, yes. And uh, we are installing FileMaker server, not web direct worker, zero. And the admin console username and uh, password and the pin. And wait for a while. Normally, installing process is much more fast uh, because I use very weak instance type here, uh, like uh, t3a.micro instance. The Clarice's recommendation is a uh, large instance. Uh, many of you might use a, at least small or medium. Uh, maybe this is the slowest uh, you can see. <clears throat> the thing that's normally slow is downloading the installer, but I see you skip that part. Okay. <clears throat> so you must be boring. Maybe it takes uh, uh, 30 seconds more. And again, you don't have to read this. I'll make a server installer care about it, not us. <clears throat> Uh, but uh, this might could be a problem. Well, like a service has started and waiting for connection session and the HTTP servers started. Ah, uh, same old story. HTTP server has a trouble. Oops. Fail to start HTTP server, please reboot the system. Okay. <clears throat> okay, reboot it. And log out automatically, then pin the host uh, to know when the host rebooted. <clears throat> Still shutting down and uh, now shut down and rebooting. <clears throat> and okay, it seems rebooted. Okay. 
Then check the file maker server running. Okay, the sample files are hosted, okay? <clears throat> so, no, let's install third bot. <clears throat> Installing third bot needs to install uh, some tools. Uh, first of all, ePay release repository. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do this part real quick. <clears throat> and uh, install SnapD. Uh, oh, this is a little big. Can you maybe tell us in the meantime what does two programs do for you? Mm -hmm. Two programs? Yeah, the two programs you're installing now, what they do, what will they do? Or why do you, do you need them? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, actually, it's not just two. Okay. It's, uh, we need a bunch of uh, tools or libraries uh, to use third bot. And uh, the one more uh, we will try dehydrated uh, is almost the same. Uh, I can say it's Linux. <coughs> I'm really sorry. <coughs> and uh, doing something more. I'm casting magic spell. Then install third bot. Uh, I see some errors, but uh, it doesn't care. <clears throat> sure, but it's, uh, I think it's, it's not really big. Uh, it won't take a time, I believe, yes. Uh, finished and uh, prepare a little yes uh, we installed third bot too and uh, we need to install the plugin and before that get python 3 pip3 uh, we need to install them so it's the same old story. Yep, and uh, Python. And a pip. Okay. Uh, Installing circle plugin for Gandinet here by Git. Yes. Then I install this circle plugin Gandhi. Ah, uh, it seems success. <laughs> so, so many of you no idea, uh, but uh, maybe uh, it's success. The the install plugin because the uh, no red letters. 
Then get the API key of Gandinet. This time we use Gandhi.net for DNS provider. Then let's get the API key of Gandhi.net. Log in and go to user settings. Then click manage uh, the user account and security settings. And click generate the API key. That's all. And then put the API key into the configuration file. So uh, making the directory. Uh, and uh, write the configuration file. Oh, uh, equals to this key is what I got. And then prepare the privileges. So finally, we are here. Uh, let's get the certificates. All of those things we've done here are just preparing the server for CertBot to getting SSL certificates from uh, Let's Encrypt. We have to do this just one time, just first time. After this, every time we get the certificate, uh, only we have to do is this command. Uh, The options may vary. Uh, this time we are using DNS Gandhi and the DNS Gandhi credentials. Okay. Uh, when the first time you run the search bot, you need to specify your email address. Uh, only the first time. After that, you don't need this. And agreement, yes. And registering my email address, blah, 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 yes. Now, uh, oh, it's challenging. Wait for a while. Now it's challenging and getting processed. Completed. So uh, let's see what happened. So all well, these folders are created now. A uh, bunch of folders created and the certificates are in the live folder. Uh, okay, congratulations. Okay, we got it. Let's check it out. Uh, how valid by open SSL command. Uh, Ah, uh, let's see. By let's encrypt from today to September second. Perfect. Goji, we have thirty minutes left in this session. We're halfway. Oh, 50 minutes? Really? 30, 30 minutes. Not, 30 minutes, okay. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Uh, maybe okay. Yeah. So, 
uh, like to show you the second one. Well, this time uh, we use dehydrated and DNS service is, is not Gandhi.net, uh, but uh, AWS root 53. The another DNS provider. So um, this time, uh, I already installed a FileMaker server. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, yes. It's real quick. Let's install it. And uh, it needs to install something again. Uh, Epel release repository again. Then install dehydrated. And uh, like the previous demo, install Python. Uh, okay, and uh, keep and upgrade it. And Bodo. And uh, get is uh, pretty much the same you know, as the previous demo. Yes. And installing root 53 hook script here by git. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the script. Uh, the, this is the hook script. And you don't have to read or edit this script. We just use it. Uh, we don't care uh, the contents. And the copy the hook folder to a dehydrated, dehydrated, a dehydrated folder and uh, then prepare the privileges. Then we need to install AWS command line tool to control root 53. Okay, then get the API key of AWS root 53. Login to AWS Management Console, then go to IAM, IAM Management page and select the users from the list of the left. Then click Add User to create user for API access. And specify your username, then click Next. And click Ex uh, attach existing policies directory and type root 53 uh, full access to filter policy. Then click the policy listed. Then click next and the uh, adding tag uh, is optional, but I highly recommend to add something, at least a name tag. Then click next see the review of what's going on. Then click create user. Now we can see our access key ID here. And secret access key when we click this show. And we can copy both keys. Uh, yes, we've made it, but I recommend 
download both keys as the CSV uh, by clicking this button. Then back to the terminal to set up these keys for dehydrated. Uh, first, setting up my access key. So everybody see my access key, uh, but don't worry, uh, they're just for this demos. Yeah. And I will discuss them immediately. Okay. And uh, specify the region name. North East one, uh, it means Tokyo region. You guys might be different. And default output format is the JSON. Done. And the register, let's encrypt before first try. Done, yes. Then define contact email address on the config file. Uh, okay. Okay, that's all. Okay, we are ready. Let's get the certificates. As I mentioned, uh, when we're setting up CertBot, we have to do this just one time. After this, every time we get the certificates, only we have to do is uh, this command. Uh, wait a moment. Okay, this, this command. To do dehydrated uh, dash d dot fmp fm training dot org. Okay, challenging. <coughs> hmm. Yes. The DNS challenge is the is defining text records of DNS and the, the challenge and the reviewing it. Sometimes it takes a time, but uh, I'll, okay, it's uh, DNS change completed and okay, done. We got it. Yes. Now let's check out the uh, how valid just for sure. Okay. Uh, let's encrypt and uh, from today to September. Perfect. So then, <coughs> uh, sorry, then yes, put the certificates into FileMaker server. Uh, we need to do this, but it's simple. So, <coughs> Delete existing certificates and uh, restart FileMaker server. Oh. And then import new certificates and restart again. To make this process easier and simpler, we can put a series of commands to a uh, sales script like this. Then this, uh, this slide. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, maybe it's okay. So let me show some demos of doing uh, certificates. So we want put these into FileMaker server. <clears throat> but as you see, the certs are symbolic links, <clears throat> not regular files. Because the original files are here, uh, well, like this. <clears throat> well, this is the original file. All the file names are different because it stores, it's stored in this same archive folder every time we got the search gates. And the latest one stored in the live folder at symbolic link and always the same name. But the problem is FileMaker server looks like uh, it doesn't support symbolic links. Uh, then importing certificates, uh, then we need to prepare a little bit about it. So here's my putting certificates script. Uh, let's set some, some variables at the beginning. Oh, I need to... Uh, Edit it. And the domain is the dot fmp dot fm training dot tech. Okay. Uh, set and uh, set username and passwords uh, for uh, FMS admin commands and domain name and uh, some path paths. Maybe we can use this script on the other FileMaker server just by editing first two lines. And then create a temporary folder and copy the certificates to, uh, to it, to make symbolic links to our regular files. Then delete existing certificates and uh, close files. Then restart FileMaker server. Then restart admin server uh, to make sure. <clears throat> and the main part is the importing new certificates, the, this part. And then close files, uh, no, uh, then restart server and admin server, then reopen the files and complete it. So before we run this, let's how it works without these certificates. So, uh, dot fmp that uh, not verily fm training dot tech ah uh, uh, that one zero too much too too many zeros <laughs> okay ah <laughs> this is the uh, Japanese but the uh, <laughs> It says no, <laughs> it's not valid. <laughs> and the access from, uh, let me try by FileMaker Pro. Uh, Uh, 
Ah, sorry, Japanese again. We can open it, but like this. This is this is not valid. Yes. <clears throat> so, can I run this script? Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. This time, I run this script by debug mode. It looks very verbose, but it's good for seeing what's going on. Delete the certificates, uh, pause a while. And uh, <coughs> we start uh, server and admin server and pause. I'm doing a number of pauses in this script. So maybe it really needed, but uh, for make sure, uh, uh, just for a lucky charm. Because the it's file maker server, yeah. it takes time. <clears throat> okay, uh, import, and uh, I I don't see any errors. It means uh, it succeed. We restart the FileMaker server and uh, restart admin server as well. And pause again. And we open the files. Done. So let's check the admin console again. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Very much valid certificates. And the uh, file make it pro. I can uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, okay let's try again Okay, we open it and it's perfect. Green sign. Ah, okay. <clears throat> then <clears throat> Oh yes, then uh, so how to automate these processes. I recommend put them into wrapper script, get the certificate, then put the certificates. The wrapper script is probably looks like this. This part is getting, and this part is putting. And how to run the whole things periodically. Unfortunately, this series of processes requires operation system super user privileges. That means we can't do it. Uh, we can't do it uh, on my FileMaker server schedule. But we can use operating systems feature called cron or cron tab like this. 
We have 10 minutes left, Koji. 10 minutes. Oh, okay. So this is the example of uh, defining Kronta. Now run on 4.30 of first day of every couple of months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, isn't it easy enough? Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, by the way, you have to hurry, try this up. Because everything I did today was on send OS 7 and FileMaker server version 19.2.1 is the last version which runs on send OS. So sorry. We have to move everything to Ubuntu Linux you know, for future versions. But don't worry. Uh, it will be basically the same on Ubuntu. A little bit different, but just a little bit. We need to replace yum to apt. That's all. <laughs> Ubuntu is the highly sophisticated distribution. It's so much modern. I believe it will be much more simpler. <clears throat> Thank you so much. All the comments I did and uh, all the scripts I used are, uh, will be on the .fmp website. You can download them and can try everything anytime. I know I will regret about sharing my bad codes. <laughs> but I always do and it's my life. <laughs> I've heard a quote in English like uh, measure twice and cut once or kind of like that. But for me, it's like act first and regret twice. <laughs> so uh, please download and try them out and feedback to me if you find something to make it much cooler. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great question. Thank you. Good question. Thanks. We have six so, minutes left for Q&A. Uh, that, that's anyone for a question, but uh, we have uh, five minutes left. Yeah. So how much? We only have five minutes. Yeah. So you need to reboot on each um, renewal as well, or restart FileMaker server, right? Not reboot the machine. Uh, reboot is also work, but uh, yeah, but just, you don't want to if you don't have to. Yes. Yeah. yeah just uh, restarting FileMaker server is easier, and uh, that at uh, that case is. Uh, Operating system rebooting is, is not needed. Mm. So how much downtime on average? I guess it depends on which service you are using, but is it what, 10 minutes? Uh, oh, oh, it's a great question. Uh, no, no, not, not much. Maybe uh, I've done a bunch of things, but uh, it's uh, because of its first time. The, the regularly, the every couple of months, just the... Uh, Renewing certificates, uh, maybe this downtime is the uh, 30 seconds. And uh, the most of the downtime is the pausing 10 seconds or 15 seconds uh, for sure. The, the, the process is uh, really quick. So it's really only about if you have very large file maker databases, opening those will take some time but it's on the FileMaker side that you will get the loss of That's time right. rather than the renewal. That's right. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. Not one, one more thing. Sometimes when you had your FileMaker file been working for quite some time and storing data back and forward, it quite takes some time to close the files. And FileMaker don't always close them like they should. So mm -hmm. when you want to delete and close your database and restart mm -hmm. FileMaker, that might be mm -hmm. a problem when you have something 
calling from the outside because there is no errors being able to be tracked mm -hmm. whether or not they were closed probably or not. Uh, yes, yes. The, the question is the, the restarting file maker uh, could be uh, not in time to uh, closing files, right? Yes. So, so look at this. FMS admin close dash F is the key. It falls uh, to closing files. Even if the, the client is opening uh, this file, uh, the file maker server falls to close immediately. So if we use dash F, uh, it always uh, file closing will be complete before restarting FileMaker server. So you always use uh, close instead of stop server and force. Yes, yes. The closing is very important. Uh, just stopping FileMaker server or just restarting FileMaker server could be a risk. Uh, but uh, we, we do close, especially dash F uh, first it will be a much, much safer. On a Windows machine, you might have to restart of the service because it might not want to close. Uh, so it's hard to tell whether or not it was restarted, but uh, the close one was good. Thank you for that, that tip. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? We have two minutes left. I suggest waiting for two minutes because there might be people from the other room coming over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Koji, did you test that on Ubuntu as well? Um, do you have access to the, uh, the ETS or something to the Ubuntu version yeah, of the server? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm allowed to say something about ETS, but uh, just keep yes, it. I yes, <laughs> just keep I, it theoretically. Pers personally, yeah. uh, without FileMaker Server, I tested Ubuntu. Mm. It's easy and sophisticated and very much modern. Uh, it's a really nice distribution. But maybe uh, we better use Ubuntu Server, not client. Uh, for FileMaker server. <clears throat> hey, Koji. Hi, this is Aggie. Hey. Long time no see. Um, stupid mm -hmm. question. I missed the beginning of the session, but does this work on um, OS 10 as well? Uh, oh, great question. Yes. Uh, basically the same. But maybe uh, this script is uh, could be used uh, pretty much the same. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, actually, I, I use the same script, but uh, the different path. Uh, the path is different, but uh, almost the same. Okay. And online, um, you said that um, there will be something posted um, on the room, right? On the website? Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I will upload them. Uh, the, okay. Every command uh, I did and the, the PDF as thank well. You. Thank you, thank you.